so the second way is to use default characteristics. So we're going to create two more product properties. One is going to be called the basis weight. And the characteristics of that are the weight of my paper. So I got a 50 pound, 60 pound, and a 70 pound. And the two variables that I'm going to maintain based on that our basis weight and caliber. So again, we have to do our mapping to our variables on our units. So I'm going to map to basis weight on both of my units. And I'm going to map to caliper on both of my units. Okay, so I'm going to do one more, and it's going to be color targets. So the characteristics I'm going with are white, blue, and red. And the spec variables that I'm going to maintain with these characteristics are the LAB targets. So then I have to associate the L target to my variables on each of my machines. Do the A target. And I'm going to do the B. Okay, so now we've got two new characteristics. We've got our color targets and we've got our basis weight. So first I'm gonna enter some specs. So my target's gonna be 50, 60, 70, So I have targets now for my basis weight and caliper specs. Prove that transaction. And then I'm going to do the same on my color targets. And these are just random. Don't uh, think that they're actual targets for LAB on these colors. I have no idea what they would be. All right, so I've got uh, targets for my LAB specs um, for each one of my colors. And I approve that transaction. So now if you came down to your unit and uh, looked at your specs right now, you wouldn't see any any specifications for those. So I have no specs on my LAB, nothing on basis weight and opacity, or basis weight and caliper. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my default characteristics on my products. So if I go into gloss and go into the characteristics tab, I can define that my default characteristics for this 50 gloss product is 50. 
and I'm going to assign it to all units. Creates a transaction. I'm going to do the same thing on my color target. So this is my white product. And you could do it on matte gloss, but we already did that mapping. So I'm going to do it here anyway. And this one I'm going to say only assign to units added in the future because we already did it. Okay, so if we go to the next product and do the same thing. So this is a 50 pound and this is a blue. And same thing here, gloss. And if we go to this product, 50, blue, and gloss. And if we do, I'll just do one more with the mats. Let's be 50. This is my white. And this is that. And if we go to my blue product, And the last one I'll do here is this, 50. And this is red and it's matte. Okay, so we've done the mapping on all of the 50 pound products. So now if we go down, we, we didn't, haven't done anything on 60 or 70 yet. So none of those specs would propagate to those. So now if we come down to our unit and look at our specs, so now you see I've got my LAB targets, the basis weight and caliper for 50 gloss, 50 matte, and I don't, th don't have them for 60 gloss, 60 gloss, 60 matte, any of those because I didn't do the default characteristic mapping. So that's just you know two ways to do it. One, you can do it at each unit, or you can do default characteristics. You only have to do it one time, and then you're all done. So you can see the, the advantages of configuring your specs at the product property level is that now I only have to go in and maintain specs on basis weight and caliper one time here, and it maps down to my product mix and spec variables on multiple units that I would be running that same grade mix. So I hope that helps. Uh, quick video on product properties.